Hi everyone, so this video will be a little bit different, mainly because we do substance stuff. But this time I wanted to show you how I've made uh, this explosion and create a small breakdown for you. So you can have an idea how this is constructed and what I've uh, used in order to create this. Okay, so let's jump into Photoshop. Okay, so whenever I'm creating an explosion, I first trying to find out what the surface uh, is going to be because uh, many times you have uh, people just putting on marketplace like a one flip book of the explosion and that's it but I think there's a lot more elements that comes into um, explosion okay so again it depends on the surface like you've got a bunch of dirt maybe on this uh, deserty surface if that will be metal then there will be probably you know no dirt at all and just many many sparks so I think it depends on the surface and you have to take that into account uh, but for this one you can see here that I've got light uh, that lits the environment and uh, and the dirt texture this is like a mask texture that it's eroding over time okay um, when it comes to light I mean many times it might be too performance heavy but I find success on the live projects when you actually have can have a light and um, and you can create various LODs and disable the light in this in the first or second LOD as well. Okay, I think it depends on, depends how much uh, performance you can have when it comes to uh, lights and explosions. But uh, I think nowadays um, it's okay to uh, use some of them. But you you probably have to test it performance wise. Okay, um, the next layer is the lens. So this is just to indicate that, that, you know, to the player, a very bright flash of the explosion happening. Mm. This happens only for 0 0.1 second, I think, although it's, it's probably variable. So it's like 0 0.1 between 0 0.2, uh, but it's just very quick flash to, you know, to indicate that there's something going on or something exploded just to grab player attention. Um, in the next, in this example, you can actually see that the flash is not there, mainly because it's a very quick. So at this, in this frame, it's it's not there already. Uh, but we got like a orange rays, and those are there may, uh, for about one second, maybe or half a second. But again, it's a it's a variable between those two values, I think. And those actually distort the environment behind it. It's kind of like a heat wave. Mm. Uh, the next one is sparks. So as you can see, um, there's a, a lot of them. So there, on I shifted them into the GPU because uh, when you creating particles on GPU, you can use a lot more. Um, so let me disable the spark trails. So you can see here, there's actually no sparks at all. And when I will enable them, uh, you'll see they're trying to follow certain paths. So if, yeah, if I will disable the velocity I have, you can see those are in a straight line. Uh, but then I'm just enabling uh, velocity on my second screen. And they're still trying to follow that path, but they have like additional velocity um, and there as well. Okay. Right. The next layer are those uh, smoke trails. So on. Uh, how I made this one is just a, a flipbook texture of the smoke. But I have a, a variable when it comes to rotation and I also duplicated the particle system and mirrored it as well because those are directional in the flipbook. So I'll show you that in a second. And when we actually go into, um, you know, the texture part. Okay, and the last layer, I think it's the actual um, explosion flipbook. I think I've got like one or two of them being spawned. It's just a one flipbook, but spawned a couple times because I added like a random direction and random velocity to it as well. Okay, so let's jump into Unreal Engine. Um, and that's the flipbook. I've imported 8K texture into the engine. However, I did reduce it the uh, size of it to 2k because I mean many times maybe you want to import higher res if you'll be doing some marketing shots um, it might be useful there and then you know reduce it to 
game res. Um, it could be 1K. It, de it depends on the performance and you know your texture uh, memory as well. I think it's a uh, per platform or per uh, quality settings. Mm, this is the uh, crack texture I've made in uh, Substance Designer. Mm, let me actually demonstrate that to you, uh, what I use it for. So in here you can only see the particle explosion, but I also have in the blueprint uh, the decals. Okay, so when the explosion happens you have the decals being spawned on the surface as well. Okay, so uh, you probably want to read like a, a surface normal to get the orientation, uh, but just to quickly demonstrate that to you, uh, what it might look like. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to rotate it a little bit to match the surface a bit better. And I've got the burn decal as well. Oftentimes you probably want to combine those two. Uh, to be in a one uh, decal and then you can erode the heat but for the this example I just wanted to show you how they look separate because uh, you might want on only to use one okay uh, let me move explosion a little bit closer to this So you've got like a decal there and in the blueprint I actually animate that. And so I made the heat to disappear very quickly and then later on the one decal underneath disappears as well. Let me get rid of the decal, burn and scorch. Okay, and uh, this is the, uh, the, the the black decal on the uh, on the burned. Um, yeah, sorry, oh, on the surface that I showed you uh, a couple seconds ago. So those spawns uh, as uh, as a separate. So first you've got uh, the glowy decal, and then you have this burned decal that disappears over time as well. Uh, small texture, so again, 8K on imported uh, size and then scaled down to 1K only. And the trails as well. So the trails is something new that I wanted to try because usually you have like a source and then you have a bunch of smoke that follows the source. Uh, but I wanted to try to have this as a, yeah, as a flipbook to see if I can, you know, how this might look because I never tried to have trails as a flipbook. And many times you want you want to use ribbons as well, although you kind of ribbons give sometimes like a stylized look to it and they not always uh, work and they probably need some custom um, things to be done to ribbons to work perfectly. So that's why I wanted to try a flipbook to see if it could work. Mm, so yeah, that's the flipbook I don't have done in Houdini, imported into the engine and then uh, duplicated the system and mirrored it as well. So it's going to happen on on both sides, mainly because it's directional. Mm, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the explosion. As you can see here as well, I've got the mesh being spawned there as well. Let me just isolate it. Okay, so it starts as a, you know, very bright and then it turns into a darker color. It's got a couple bounces and then it just disappears. Yeah, so there are very various elements there, and uh, that's usually my approach, how I make those, okay? I start with the flipbooks and then I add layers to it. Uh, so I've got sparks later on, and I've got those little bits of the stones. Um, yeah, so that's how I made this explosion. If you'd like to see more of those, or if you've seen my some of my effects I would like to, to break down, just let me know. And, I'm sure I can uh, just, you know, break it down for you. All right. Thanks.